Bitcoin is entering a super cycle. For real this time. You can change your life in crypto. If you do this right, smash the like button, post this video on social media. The more people who know about this, the bigger the blow off top will be. Personally, I sent this video to my friends, my family, because I want them to understand the opportunity. Just as a reminder, in one to two years, this opportunity will be gone. If Bitcoin follows even just the loose path that it always has, the four-year cycle, we have way over a year left in this bull market. Expert trader Bob Lucas, we featured his work on the channel before you loved this video, you watched this video. Well, he gives us a refresher and explains how much more time we have. And after this, the opportunity is gone. We are a good 20 months away from when prior cycles would typically have peaked. Just as a refresher on that, the 35 month mark takes us into deep 2025 and we've just begun 2024. And that shows you really the tremendous potential that still lies ahead for Bitcoin in terms of price. If the cycle were to unfold as it has pretty much since its inception, uh, well over a decade ago now. So that is the tremendous opportunity that we have. So you might be skeptical of a super cycle. You might be saying to yourself, well, people said super cycle last time. People who say super cycle are just not thinking. But wait a minute. Everybody seems to be saying that a super cycle won't happen. Everybody seems to be thinking no super cycle. Wait a minute. Almost everybody, if not everybody, seems to be pretty damn sure that Bitcoin today is not in a super cycle. We're not going to be in a super cycle. And huh, well, if everybody's thinking that, if everybody's thinking the same thing, then I don't think that that many people are actually thinking. Have an open mind. I hope that you just don't sell too early. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to give you the info. Like the video. A super cycle makes sense for this reason. For me, it just, I just have a sense that there is a lot of strength that I haven't seen in the prior cycles. I didn't, I mean, there was strength in that 15, 17 cycle, and you can definitely feel it. There was some level of strength, I guess, in, in the 2018 to 22 cycle, although that mostly only came towards the, uh, the blow off phase. Uh, this cycle just feels like there is a relentless bid behind this. Uh, you also see this in some of the on-chain metrics where the long-term holders didn't really sort of sell their positions down and they've been accumulating a lot earlier than, than normal. And it feels as if um, this holder class is, is really positioned well for much higher prices and this, um, you know, this four-year cycle being back up and above all time high territory. Um, I'm also sensing that, you know, a lot of people just, you know, from a retail perspective, uh, sentiment just is in check in general. I mean, of course, you know, people are getting excited within the crypto world, but even within that world, it just feels very much contained. Whereas the last cycle, uh, we had a lot of sort of fraudsters and personalities, uh, a lot of leverage, of course, that was driving that market. And this one just feels far more spot driven than anything else. So just people, institutions um, appreciating the value of holding spot Bitcoin and buying spot um, by the bucket load. And I think that's what's driving this market higher. And you also see during these sell offs with the, the sort of less leverage move that the market has, you're seeing sort of less volatility to the downside because holders just don't want to sell uh, on these dips and the support and the bid is so strong that these declines that we're seeing, these 15, 20% declines are being snapped up relatively quickly. And that leads me really into the topic here today, which is a possible super cycle. So at this point in the four year cycle, I think everything is going really well. Obviously, we have um, some very major sort of tailwinds behind Bitcoin. We now have obviously an ETF that's out there that's seeing tremendous inflows into the space. But the ETF also goes a step further in the sense that it provides now a level of legitimacy to the traditional market and the traditional world. Uh, now that there's an ETF, it's available. People, I guess, view the asset class 
um, as being something that is investable and not something to be laughed at. And of course, you all know and you've all seen kind of this radical shift in sentiment towards Bitcoin as a whole. When you speak to people at the moment, they don't sort of come back immediately with, oh, that's a joke or that's a scam or that's a, uh, a Ponzi. I mean, you still, of course, get some of that, but we've come a really, really long way in Bitcoin being accepted as an asset class that's here to stay. And that is also a function, and as I've mentioned so many times in different videos, of time, right? Bitcoin is a time machine. It is a perpetual machine that just stamps out blocks one after the other that are irreversible. And over time, with each block that occurs without any downtime, with uh, the reliability that it shows, it gains value from its, uh, its, its time and its history in the market. And uh, with each cycle, that sentiment gets reinforced and uh, people feel uh, more confident in assigning value and signing, assigning wealth to this asset class. So from a four-year cycle standpoint, this is just a nice, clean cycle picture. It doesn't really get any cleaner than this. It, it is just a picture perfect. The question really then becomes, as, I've, as I mentioned earlier about this cycle, is this one going to be different? Because and it's something I've talked a lot about, and not just within Bitcoin, but cycles in general. Cycles do rhyme over time, but they do change character significantly at some point. Nothing ever goes up for, in perpetuity. At some point, uh, we will see a cycle that doesn't look the same uh, as the prior cycles. And I've suggested in the past that this cycle, this four-year cycle, might be that. And I still believe that. I think this cycle is going to be very different to the prior ones. From a timing standpoint, be similar, but from a price action perspective, be very different. And that is the idea that we could be looking at somewhat of a super cycle period uh, coming up in this four-year cycle or a left translated cycle. Interesting. So Bitcoin fundamentally, narrative-wise, and just from a price time perspective, like how does the chart look, Bitcoin is very bullish. But did you hear what he said? Two possibilities. There are two possibilities. A huge blow off top left translated cycle or a huge blow off top right translated super cycle. So a left translated cycle, we'd see the blow off top 100K, 200K probably this year. A super cycle, we'd see a even more huge blow off top late 2025. Again, I need you to understand that the stars are aligning here for Bitcoin for the first time. We, we have kind of this confluence of all these narratives and themes from all the prior cycles that I think have now come together. Uh, you had the initial kind of, uh, you know, you know sovereign, self-sovereign guys that got in early into this uh, into this technology. And so that first wave, that first cycle, then you had a lot of the sort of tech focused people that jumped in with some very early VCs and so on and bought. And then you had that big retail craze in, in 15, 16, 17. Then you had that sort of early institutional phase in the last cycle. Uh, and then since then, we've got this big sort of NFT movement that's come in. And that's important because they also are Bitcoin buyers and they're crypto buyers in general. So they've entered the ecosystem. And now we have just this ETF that's, that's, that's made access to Bitcoin broad and, of course, has given it that standing and authority that makes it okay to accumulate and buy. So it really does feel as if kind of all parties now are on board and they're all here. And there's this sort of just this self-fulfilling expectation that Bitcoin still has uh, one big sort of move up to to some type of massive peak that i think probably takes some time then to to digest once it does happen so we definitely have the makings for a pretty big move and this is why i think that this coming cycle this current cycle that we're in is either going to be experiencing a left translated cycle move or is going to be somewhat of a super cycle and not a diminishing kind of return. I think a lot of people have been somewhat fooled by the fact that the last cycle didn't necessarily extend up into that six figure area that you would think would happen. And I think that's also because the last cycle was mostly a, 
uh, like I said, a fraud-based, uh, leverage-driven, um, almost coordinated cycle that uh, just ran out of steam. And then once, uh, once it did, um, the leverage had to be un un unwound and, uh, you know, and, and then everything collapsed. This cycle feels much more sustainable and has the foundation for it to move higher. So option one is left translated cycle, meaning huge blow off top happens sooner than most people expect, probably this year. This is how that would happen. From a left translated cycle standpoint, what that would basically mean is that it doesn't adhere to the prior cycles, that it just wants to keep on going because there's just a solid bid behind this market that nobody wants to sell at that level and the lack of uh, supply on the market is uh, it's just uh, not, you know it's, it's just so low relative to the amount of buying that's out there and the market will push higher so a left translated cycle right here means that we just keep on moving higher and we come to test the all-time high levels and create some good separation from the uh, the 10 month moving average and just essentially blast through the all time high levels well before the midpoint, which typically is where the all time high is hit. And if that were to happen, it would mean that we have entered that very speculative phase of the four year cycle. And speculative phases in the four year cycle, any cycle, don't typically last too long. They may last for four to six or eight months, but once they run their course and once they peak, that typically means that the cycle has come to an end. And the left translated cycle simply means that instead of expecting the high of the four year cycle to occur around that three year mark, it would occur at or before the midpoint. And the midpoint is December of this year. So a left translated cycle means that we peak before the end of this year and that the four year cycle would then spend two years moving down or mostly sideways, it doesn't really matter at this point, down to the next four year cycle low. So if we're headed for a major, major peak for Bitcoin, it's first real major peak, and I'm not talking about peaks like we've seen in the prior three, four year cycles, which is three years up, one year down, I'm talking about a major peak that takes maybe one full four year cycle to recover, similar to what the NASDAQ did in 2000 and dot com boom then that could possibly come from a move in the next eight months to 10 months so that would basically mean that instead of pulling back and consolidating as it has done in prior cycles that this would just blast higher leave so many people behind at this point because the expectation is that we'll be peaking as we have in prior cycles around year three and essentially just make that run and begin that run higher to that high. If you look at uh, or take just some bars from the last sort of cycles, we're talking about sort of that run happening and starting kind of now. Or if you look at the 2017 cycle, kind of taking it and, and doing something like this. So it's irrelevant what the price target is. I, I, I don't think anybody can tell you where that peak would occur. The point is though, that on a left translated cycle, we would actually already be in that phase of the blow off move. It doesn't look evident now. It wouldn't look evident just yet, but um, we, historically we'd be pulling back around this point and consolidating. And if this just keeps on moving higher and takes out some higher levels and starts testing the all time highs, that is a significant departure and change from prior cycle behavior and would indicate that this market just wants to rip high. So really, this early left translated cycle with a massive blow off top, this would happen because of the following reason. We do have the ETF narrative, but it's not only an ETF, it's not only a narrative, it is reality that we're seeing billions of dollars in inflows coming in here that we haven't seen during prior cycles. And that, of course, is all self-fulfilling. Higher prices, uh, gains awareness, access to product and access to Bitcoin through ETFs makes it easier for capital to flow in. And it all just becomes, that's how a bubble gets built. It just becomes, uh, it just inflates and inflates and inflates. Inflates, people start talking about it, and sentiment begins to expand. 
capital flows in, prices uh, get higher prices, and it just keeps on going until, of course, you, it just runs out to a point where uh, it's non-sustainable anymore. So this idea is fairly relevant and I think has a reasonably high probability. I, I couldn't really assign a probability to it, but when I take that feeling and take the, the evidence of strength and we take the ETF, um, that is uh, definitely something, uh, it's not a black swan, but it is something the market has been waiting for for eight to 10 years uh, within Bitcoin. Um, it does have the, uh, the feeling and the hallmark here of a left translated possibility. Some of them can get quite high in a very highly speculative market. Uh, I just don't doubt how high Bitcoin can go in a left translated blow off cycle move. Um, but I think it would be well above the $100,000 level if it's a left translated cycle. And I think you would just get a situation where we're just going to, ex we'll just extend so far uh, above uh, all the indicators would be just, you know, sort of just right at the top uh, for sustained periods of time. And then we'll get some really huge separation between kind of a 10 month moving average and I think it would be a matter of just looking at a certain point if it were to occur and uh, an extremely stretched point that you'd begin to start unwinding position, knowing that you just can't essentially time the absolute top, but uh, you will be at a price that makes sense to unwind because uh, I believe by the next four year cycle low, we'll be able to pick it up at a much lower price. Now, that's okay. Here's the, that's, that's the left translated cycle idea. I think it has a lot of merit. Look, Bitcoin's price blowing past 100K, 200K this year, that'd be epic. But building a base into 2025 for an even bigger super cycle, that'd be elite. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is actually the first cycle where a super cycle could be a real possibility. That leads me into the discussion of a super cycle. So putting aside the possibility of this left translated cycle move, we have the other possibility, which is simply that this cycle, so in the right translated cycle, essentially mirroring the prior cycles, I believe the way it's structured right now and the way it feels the 2015 to the 17 peak down to the 18 low is the cycle that resembles this the most. It has uh, so much, so many of those characteristics with a less amount of volatility. That cycle suggests, that, and, and even the prior cycles to suggest that we need to pause, reaccumulate kind of in this range, maybe pull back to that 10 month moving average around the 37,000 or so, maybe 38, 39,000 level over the next few months and into the halving, coming out of the halving, just create that, uh, that foundation for what will eventually become the push to all time high and the breakout to the peak of the cycle. Um, so in that case, we, again, we're looking at something similar to what we saw in 17. That means we need to spend the next three or four or five months consolidating into, I guess, uh, the end of the, towards the late summer months before beginning to make that attack higher. And that builds a foundation, a stable foundation of, of, of long-term holders um, to allow this market to move on higher and up to a peak in the next cycle. But what is different to me, again, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that this market has a lot more strength than I think I've seen in the past. And we have the institutional narrative. And not like the last cycle where everyone said, oh, the institutions are here. They weren't institutions. They were crypto bros uh, in sort of funds, but they were crypto bros and DGENs at heart. And this time around, we have your traditional suit and tie institution and your wealth funds and uh, your big family office funds that are in on this. And that's what we're feeling. That's what we're seeing here in the accumulation of this market. Um, so if we were to see a right translated cycle, I think we're going to see that hit of all time highs a little bit sooner than we have in the past. And uh, of course, we'll see some volatility at some point, some correction was going to come. But in general, just a, a consistent accumulation and uptrend 
into that all-time high level by the summer, late summer, uh, late uh, maybe early fall, and then possibly consolidate again at that all-time high level and then just keep on moving. So in, in many respects, it would mirror the 17 cycle, but I think just in a more accelerated path. And that would lead, in my opinion, to an outperformance of this cycle relative to the last cycle, because it's the one cycle that again converges or converges all these themes together, all the participants together in one big final kind of blow off move that ends the first big financial chapter for Bitcoin. I don't really mean that in a negative way, but it would mean that every participant and all these themes get to participate in a big bubble blow off move to come. Let me know, let me know. Do you think a left translated cycle blow off top this year, is that likely? Or super cycle next year? Either way, it's becoming quite clear a big move in price is coming. So I, I do really think that we're gonna see an outsized move come in this four year cycle, whether it's from a left translated cycle move, which is more shorter in duration, sharper, extremely sharp up to the upside and peak this year, or the four year cycle as it has occurred in prior cycles, but just in a more accelerated time frame. All this basically doesn't really matter for us, does it? Because the idea here is that we are invested for the four year cycle. Uh, on a left translated cycle, I think you can almost, I wouldn't say safely because there isn't anything um, safely, uh, safe about sort of investing necessarily, but um, I think we can, we can say that on a left translated cycle standpoint, we're gonna get a big move through all time highs and probably into the six figure range before peaking. And then on a more sustainable traditional four year cycle move, that will, uh, that will comfortably get us into that all-time high territory and beyond. Um, I wanna say that this cycle looks really, really good, really strong. Um, and I think this strength is telling us that this market is gonna go much higher over the next either six months or 18 months into a right translated cycle high. That this cycle could be some type of super cycle. And again, I don't throw that term out loosely. I know it's been kind of somewhat of a meme of late. Um, but I think there is that real possibility and that by the next video, which will probably be two months, maybe two to three months away, we will have a very definitive answer on whether or not we're looking at this left translated cycle possibility. In fact, we'll probably know within the next four to six weeks whether or not the left translated cycle possibility is real. So we'll know. Uh, I guess by the end of this month or next month, if it's up near or above, say, the $60,000 area, then I think there's a very good chance that we are in a blow-off phase that is unfolding and you don't want to uh, sell that short. You don't want to jump ship on the possible double top possibility um, because that will probably become a narrative as well. If it were to do that, uh, you want to hold the course, stay the course, and... Um, see it through as we have in the prior cycle. Exactly. Watch out if everybody starts chanting double top when Bitcoin gets back up to 65, 75K. Check out Bob Lucas's channel for the full video and all his videos. Check out his Station 3 in real life Web3 community slash collaborative workspace in New York. Subscribe to us, Altcoin Daily. We continue to keep you updated and in the know on everything crypto. See you tomorrow, my friends. It's turning into a great year.